Have you ever truly asked yourself why some countries on this earth just don't seem to advance? It's an old question, you may say. We all know it's because of hunger, poverty, some sort of new age colonization through some big companies and actually because of the old form of colonization, etc, etc. So nothing we don't actually already know about. So why does everyone seemingly know about everything but nothing really changes? Is it maybe because we actually don't know that much about the root of the problem and do not understand what's behind those terms? Or is it maybe because a majority in the world doesn't want anything to change? Okay, the last question is actually nothing I will refer to today because it will go too far. So let's just stick with the not knowing part. As a 19-year-old that hasn't had any sort of degree, I'm not likely to bring to light some sort of universal solution, but I'm convinced that sometimes little tweaks in the way we see and understand things can actually change, yeah, a lot. My name is Marcy. I graduated from high school last year in Germany and now I'm here in Cameroon for almost three months already. At some point in my life, I felt the need to get to know my family, the country of my ancestors and the culture because I hope that this is how I would understand myself better. So all in all, this trip is pretty, pretty personal and so is also the way I'm going to talk about my perceptions. And additionally, being in Cameroon opens an opportunity to really understand why some countries do have issues with their development. Because even without having to do some extended research, I know that Cameroon is not considered to be one of the most evolved countries in the world. To understand how I came to certain realizations, I will need to lead you through my thinking process. And no, it's not going to be boring, I promise. I will start with a short experiment. Just look at your shoes. They didn't get between the pile of clothes in your chair where they absolutely don't belong to by themselves. Someone had to design them, others had to manufacture them, some were included in the transportation. So where did the designer learn how to design and how did the worker know how to put all pieces of the shoe together and how did the driver learn how to drive? You can do it with pretty much everything you see around you and you realize that it all comes down to having some sort of knowledge and skills and sometimes also values. And the main provider of the latter is always some sort of education. Without it, streets can't be built, healthcare can't be improved, and advancements can't happen. We talked about it at school too, but this is the less scientific and more personal way to find out about the importance of education. So if education is the main drive of a country's advancement, there must be something else that does the exact opposite and that I need to find out about. And to understand why countries like Cameroon don't really seem to significantly evolve, it would make sense to start with getting an understanding of the school system. Oh, 
Bien, le système scolaire camerounais uh -huh, est un système qui veut euh, comprendre les compétences euh, des, des élèves. Notre préoccupation, c'est que l'enfant puisse manipuler, que l'enfant puisse écrire, que l'enfant puisse calculer, que l'enfant développe certaines compétences parce que vous allez euh, convenir avec moi que tout individu a des compétences mais celles-ci sont cachées. Il faut pouvoir les développer pour que l'individu vous prouve de quoi il est capable. Au rectangle, nous avons ici la longueur et la largeur. So as pretty much everywhere else in the world, Cameroon has designed a school system that in theory should help a child to do exactly that. The school system can be divided into four parts. The maternelle for three to six year olds, the sil for six to 11 year olds, the college for 11 to 15 year olds, and the lycée for 15 to 18 year olds. It can be one year more or one year less, depending on the month in which a child was born and at what age it was sent to school. And in general, students have to pass four major exams to successfully graduate. It looks like a system that makes sense in theory. Every child starts at one point, gets knowledge and competences over time to then be released from school with a good education. But in practice, the difficulties start with the lessons themselves. In Germany, the effectifs are euh, 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 suffisamment controlled and gérés. You can find avec euh, euh, 12-13 élèves dans une salle de classe. Bon, c'est le contraire ici chez nous. Le ratio impose un enseignant pour 60 élèves. Bon, en Allemagne, tout enseignant euh, 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 a déjà la possibilité de travailler avec un ordinateur. Uh -huh. Ça fait quoi? Ça fait que l'enseignant peut uh -huh, faire ses recherches uh -huh, à partir du net et avoir certaines informations que nous autres nous en avons pas nous on passe des nuits à fouiller les livres These problems lead to more parents wanting their children to attend private schools since the classes are smaller and they are more likely to be better equipped which also increases the quality of the lessons and in the long term also the chance to successfully graduate in this private school I visited, for example, there has been a 100% success rate over the past three years when it comes to passing the governmentally approved SEP exam. In general, in Cameroon, parents have to pay for school books and uniforms themselves since the state simply doesn't do it. But in private schools, parents actually have to additionally pay the seat of their children which means that the highly successful and productive school form is unfortunately not available for everyone. Nous n'avons pas le strict minimum pour envoyer nos enfants à l'école. Effectivement, l'argent le sérieux problème des Camerounais. Les Camerounais sont suffisamment pauvres dans l'immense majorité. Ceux qui ont l'argent, ils sont peu, mais dans l'immense majorité, c'est la pauvreté qui est ambiante. Bon, et le parent, quand tu regardes un peu les salaires au niveau du Cameroun, tu vas trouver que c'est insignifiant. S'il faut convertir ce que nous touchons en termes d'euros, ça va te faire rire, comme toi tu as été en Allemagne. S'il faut convertir ça en termes d'euros, ça va vraiment te faire rire. Tu vas te rendre compte qu'il y a des gens au cours d'un mois qui touchent 10 euros, qui touchent 20 euros. This, among other points, is why Cameroon has introduced a second branch that allows children that are 11 years old to specialize in a certain domain at so-called lycée technique. They pretty much have the same academic career as the students of the general branch, but when they are done with school, they do not have to start an apprenticeship anymore. Lorsque les enfants se spécialisent un peu tôt, uh -huh, ça allège, ça donne des possibilités de la recherche facile de l'argent par l'enfant lui-même déjà. But at the same time, those who follow the general school path have more options since they are taught more intellectual subjects such as literature, history, and geography. 
So looking at what I found out so far, it is really clear that the Cameroonian school system has some major issues. And I've also realized that the root of every single one of those problems must somehow come from poverty. And when the majority of the country is poor, it's often a sign for a dysfunctioning of governing. Ce que nous déplorons, la corruption, la corruption qui est dans, un, dans le centre éducatif. Parce que le, le monde de l'éducation, c'est un monde corrompu. Ah uh -huh. here we have it, the break of development. The main outcome of corruption means that in the long term, money and knowledge are missing where they are needed and that a certain unlawful dynamic destroys productivity. And since we know that and why education is the drive of development, it especially gets dangerous when those things come together in that specific area. Si je prends par exemple, disons, comme les gens de la délégation qui sont passés ici, notre hiérarchie qui est passée ici le matin à l'inopiné, normalement, quand nous passons deux semaines de congé, on envoie quand même une note de service la note de service qui nous certifie qu'ils vont passer tel ou tel jour le temps d'apprêter les documents. Mais quand ils viennent, ils viennent arriver là à l'inopiné et ils nous posent des questions de suspicion, au cas où tu n'y parviens pas à répondre comme ça se doit, tu es obligé de leur donner quelque chose. Donc ça, c'est le système camerounais. C'est un système que nous n'apprécions pas dans l'éducation. Ça n'avance pas, on n'avance pas avec ce système-là. And for those who go to school, no matter in which branch they are, the same problem awaits a huge percentage of them after a successful graduation. Pour prendre le cas des écoles, de, 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 je peux dire des, des écoles secondaires de haut niveau où il faut parfois monnayer pour avoir des places. Ce qui fait que ceux-mêmes qui méritent, ceux-mêmes qui, qui travaillent vraiment pour avoir de, de, certaines choses, ne l'ont pas. Ils sont obligés de rester là au quartier, à badrouiller, à vagabonder. Je prends les par exemple de, de certaines personnes que je connais très bien qui ont des licences, dont des diplômes académiques, et, je peux dire, bien édifiés, qui sont édifiés mais qui, ne sont, qui sont là, assis, font par exemple le call box, ou des cafétérias, tout ça. So apparently for young people, it has become more important to do something that brings them quick money, rather than to know a lot and not being able to find a job. And for everyone in general, the trust in having a career opportunity seems to be lost or has never even existed. Les conséquences de la corruption, c'est que, bon, on va prendre une conséquence que tout le monde connaît, c'est que même les jeunes savent que pour avoir quelque chose, ce n'est plus le mérite. Quoi. Il faut forcément l'acheter, il faut le monnayer. Et la conséquence, c'est que c'est une mentalité ancrée dans les mentalités jeunes aujourd'hui que personne ne peut plus avoir quelque chose par le mérite. Tout le monde est obligé de passer par des chemins, on peut dire, illicites pour avoir certaines choses. In a society where the majority of the population is poor, the biggest questions are always, where can I get money from? How am I going to eat tomorrow? Who is going to take care of the children when I'm at work? If the fundamental needs of a human being are not met, he or she will not think about the advancement of a country, they will understandably think about themselves. Me first. And this is the exact same mentality of those who rule the country, and I believe that this is often where this way to think comes from. The already established general mentality of self-focus. That makes me think that maybe the focus should not be on corruption, but on the corrupted themselves. So the question at this point is, how can you change the mentality of a person or a whole society? Honestly, a question I have never asked myself before. La mentalité, je pense que pour la changer, il faut d'abord que le gouvernement d'abord change leur propre mentalité. Ensuite, qu'il inculque cette mentalité-là, changer aux jeunes, parce que ça passe par l'éducation, bien sûr. 
l'éducation des jeunes dès le bas âge. Il faudrait que cet exemple, l'exemple que le gouvernement montre est que faut laisser, comment dire, que le, le jeune doit cultiver l'effort, doit cultiver le goût de l'effort. Parce que c'est en faisant des efforts que tu peux avoir ce que tu veux. I do understand, but what if in the end the government doesn't change its mentality at all? Non, la mentalité devait être, doit être axée sur l'éducation. On doit préconiser l'éducation des enfants dès le bas âge, ce qui va permettre que, bon, à tous les niveaux aussi, sur le plan familial et social, sur le plan familial, il doit avoir, on, on doit, les parents doivent euh, bien éduquer les enfants, et leur, leur apprendre, euh, comme je disais, le goût de, de l'effort. Ce qui fait qu'au fur et à mesure qu'ils grandissent, ils vont grandir avec cette, cette mentalité-là de travailler toujours dur pour avoir ce qu'ils méritent. Et au fur et à mesure, quand ils seront grands, et s'ils se retrouvent aussi dans le gouvernement, bien sûr, on va retrouver des, des garçons, des, des filles, pardon, des hommes en général, qui auront envie de progresser, de faire progresser les autres dans le mérite. And here you go again, education. Looking at the internal problems of a country, there seems to be a fight between education and corruption. The one side tries to eliminate the other side. So this means that to change the mentality of a society, a certain conscience for the consequences of corruption has to be created, which means that people have to understand the correlation between their poverty and corruption. But what is the best way to reach people? Here are three options that result from what I've learned. So the first one is to implement a new law. Je pense que si on se pose la question de comment est-ce que faire une nouvelle une loi ou une règle qui pourrait permettre ce changement là. Je pense que c'est à l'Assemblée nationale que ça revient. This brand new law should imply that in order for the school to accept a child, parents must go to a certain class where they are taught about this problem, or in order to be authorized to write one of the four major exams, children have to take that class. And of course, I see the problem with a government like the current one not really wanting this knowledge to be spread since it could cause rebellions, or the verifying of someone's presence could be an obstacle too. But if such a law is introduced, a parent and students would be passively forced to learn something about the importance of moral education and the reach would also be increased. The second possibility is the work with NGOs that would either take over that task or start their own education programs. Of course, they have to be regulated too, but this is just an idea. And the third one, and maybe the most important one, is the cooperation between schools and parents. Comment est-ce que nous suivons les enfants? Comment est-ce que nous gardons les enfants? Comment est-ce que nous dispensons les leçons? Comment est-ce que nous donnons les exercices? Est-ce que ces exercices-là sont corrigés? Est-ce que l'enseignant suit particulièrement, individuellement, chaque enfant? Hein? Et ça doit se ressentir au niveau des parents. This is how parents would learn to trust the school system more and to stay motivated to educate their child because there may be no better assurance for a parent than to know that someone actually cares for their children. So why is it possible that some countries do not evolve? I have found out for myself that it is because of a certain mentality that people have because of their poverty. And poverty can have a lot of reasons besides a corrupted government, but a corrupted government has a huge impact on its country's development. I personally think that it's just a question of time until the minority that wants change actually becomes a majority. And this is when the country has the chance to advance. <laughs>